Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee with tonight's version of the Attack of the Polar Vortex Part 2, which is so much better than Star Wars. But uh, what we're doing here is we're looking at the stratosphere, the very top of the atmosphere, all the way up at 10 millibars. Okay, I mean, we're talking very, very top, uh, above where the planes fly. And here's the polar vortex that dominates it. You notice there's only really two features. You have this polar vortex and you have this big high. Now... The systems of the lower atmosphere are just kind of moving along in this flow. So uh, the cold air is running right, right now uh, on judging, uh, using this as a guide, running from uh, across northernmost Canada and then out. Okay, so we're getting this break. Now watch what happens over time to that vortex as it strengthens and then rotates around. And you see all this red area here this is that ridge is building back up uh, into uh, the southern parts of the arctic region the southern and western parts of the arctic region it's a very very warm air attack that's going on here and now the polar vortex is oriented more in a north-south position along the east coast as opposed to being oriented in a north-south position way out in the atlantic uh, out at about uh, 40 or 30 west so now, in theory, you'll have air masses that are running from Siberia across the Arctic and into eastern Canada. So we have a, a, a cross-polar flow at the highest levels of the atmosphere here being set up. And as we move through the next couple of weeks, you'll notice, now we've been trying to see if, if this vortex were going to split so that part of it would sit down in, in northern Canada here, the other part back in Siberia, and you'd have this long pol uh, polar flow. And a few uh, runs of the model late last week were showing this split. They've kind of backed away from that. But um, there is still this setup here. You see how the flow goes from Siberia down into, into the eastern Canada and into the northeast. So this is a, an alleyway for cold air to move uh, down uh, at the lower levels of the atmosphere uh, down to our latitude. Now, it takes time for the bottom part of the atmosphere to catch up to this. And... As we've said, there's usually a lag time of about a week or two. But the idea here is, is that we are setting up, uh, even though it's not splitting, it's elongated. And you've got this long stretch of cross-polar flow that has developed. So uh, this is a positive, uh, if you like, wintertime weather. Now, this does not speak to the specifics of what is uh, going to happen. It's just we're talking here in the broadest sense. Uh, it's not going to tell you about storm develop specific storm development. It's not going to tell you about where rain snow lines are going to be, and it's not going to tell you where um, tracks of these storms are going to be. Now, that's upstairs, and I want to show you how what it means down at the surface. And we're looking here at uh, the above normal and below normal temperatures. And you can probably you can see the split here. What happens better? Now here is that intense warming that's going on in the Arctic. You can see this large area. The entire Arctic region is covered by much above normal temperatures in the reds and the oranges and the purples, going from Alaska all the way across the Arctic to the European side, and also right along uh, the northern uh, the uh, ocean borders here of uh, Siberia, where it touches the Arctic Ocean. Now we'll move it over time, and you'll notice that that above normal area kind of holds its own it, weak, it weakens a little bit but it's still above normal in there but if you follow now the blue areas okay this is below normal temperatures and you can see what the split of the of the of the warming does basically uh, it splits uh, or indicating it at, at maybe lower levels from the very top of the atmosphere that you're getting a split so that siberia gets very cold and then you get cold air moving into eastern Canada and the United States. And you can see how all that blue is centered up here. And then as we get into the latter part of the forecast period, down through central Canada and into the uh, eastern part of the United States, all the way down into the southeast, if this is correct. So this is the practical view of the attack of the polar vortex. And, and again, it's not going to tell you much about day-to-day -day changes. It still doesn't mean that you can't get a warm-up for a day or two. Um, it also doesn't mean that, you're, that snowstorms are in, imminent, but it does tell you that um, the cold air supply is going to be there at least for a, a good part of the time. And how it sets up ultimately in the short range is a whole other issue that we're going to address 
in our regular posts. So this is the upper air view. And we, of course, will keep an eye on this because this has implications for the rest of the winter, uh, for the rest of February and going into the month of March. So enjoy your day and be sure to check my other video, which speaks specifically to today's uh, GFS run. The overnight run was pretty dynamic. Um, so you should, you'd want to take a look at that and watch for my posts uh, during the day on Sunday regarding uh, the long range once we get the European model out and the day run model, the day run models out. So have a good day.